Hey guys, what's going on? This is Elias back with another video of Java Essential Training Series. So far, I've done 25 videos on this course. So Java is object-oriented programming language. But in those 25 videos, I've discussed the uh, basics of Java. And from now onwards, this video, I'll be talking about the object-oriented side of Java. So what is an object-oriented language? The most popular programming language were developed in the last 30 years were all object-oriented programming languages. So I'm going to give you a brief history when we started using object-oriented languages and why we needed them. Before object-oriented languages, there used to be a procedural straight languages like Fortran or Cobol. They used to be a, a big chunk of code in the same place. They used to have a lot of variables, all the codes at one place, right? It was quite hard to maintain those programs, to design those programs. And that's why the object-oriented design or object-oriented concept gained popularity. It was around 80s. So nowadays, if you want to develop a program for a Windows platform or you know for a, a Mac platform or you want to develop an Android games or Android application, you need to use object-oriented languages such as Java, C++, Ruby on Rails, and Python. The object-oriented language is not a language itself. It's a it's an idea which is supported by uh, many languages. So now we're gonna talk about the core concepts of object-oriented programming. So in object-oriented programming, we have objects, classes, a concept of abstraction, and uh, encapsulation, and polyformism. Right? Um, I'll make a, a separate video for each of these topic, and I will explain them in details. But in this video, I'll give you a quick introduction. What are these? So let's talk about an object. So what is an object in programming language, of course. Uh, but let me ask you a question. What is an object in the real life? Uh, I've got this uh, noise filter here. Is it an object in real life? Yes, this is an object. I've got my glasses here. This is an object as well. And I've got a mouse. This is an object. All right, so I've got a Coke can as well. So in the real world, every object has attributes, behavior, and identity. I've got a separate um, a Coca-Cola can here. Of course, they're the same, but they are not one object. They are separate object. They have a different identity. This can can be filled or can be uh, empty, right? So that's the attribute of this, and that could be just sealed. The attributes to the objects are specific to those objects, all right? They belong to them. So, I mean, telephone cannot fly or aircraft cannot ring, all right? So, the same in um, Java programming, object-oriented programming, we have objects, but we take them a bit further. Uh, in programming language, of course, we can call this an object. I can take my name and make it an object, right? But in the real world, we usually call objects what we can see. Let's say I can see this, right? So this is an object to me. But in programming, we can declare those things as an object which uh, we can't see, which basically, let's say a bank account can be an object. Uh, a name can be an object. A date, a time can be an object. So that's the difference between, and in programming language, of course, they have their attributes, they have their behaviors. So we'll discuss them in details. All right, so now let's talk about the classes. Classes and objects can go hand to hand, right? We cannot skip classes and talk about objects. They both, uh, basically the classes are, I'm gonna give you an example, right? So when we go to school, uh, what do you say? What do we say? Like, oh, I'm gonna go to in class one or class two or class three. So what does class have? Class have an object such as a people or kids, right? Class have chairs, class have tables, right? So in the programming language, we create classes and then classes create an object. Classes basically describe the type of the class, right? What is it? Is it an employee? Is it a bank account? Is that event, player, document, album? And then classes have the properties and data. We can call it attributes in a simple word. So what is it? Weight, height, color, score. Let's say it's a black color, right? So its attribute is the color black, right? And file type, health, length. So operations, we have a class operation as well. It's basically a behavior. So what can class do for us? Uh, can it play? Can it open a file? 
search a file, save a file, edit a file, or print a file. So these are all these three things make classes. I'm going to explain briefly about encapsulation concept in object oriented programming language. So the word encapsulate is basically to cover something, right? So to protect something. Let's say you've got an, uh, the program which uh, explains the bank account for someone, right? So you want to protect that, right? You want to encapsulate that. You want to show only that part which is necessarily required for other classes to use that, right? So that is basically called encapsulation. I'll do a separate video on encapsulation and I will explain them in details. Uh, but I will do another a programming example as well. So uh, follow the playlist as well. So all right, so that was uh, about it, uh, this video. I just wanted to give you a quick examples and uh, wanted to briefly explain about objects and classes and encapsulation. Uh, there are three more concepts I know, but I will explain them with examples in, in IntelliJ IDEA. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. If you find this information useful, uh, share it with your friends. You can follow me on Twitter at OasisMirza01. And for now, Stay blessed.